you know, stay with sacred art. You know, the marvelous thing about sacred art is that um, it lifts us to its state of beauty. And when we are in that state, we are we surpass ourselves. I mean, in the sense that we are generous, we are loving. All those kinds of things come naturally to us when we are in that state. Alas, we can't hold it, so we go back. So uh, you might almost say it does our spiritual work for us. Anyway, uh, in doing that, there is a, we know. See, it, that's a kind of knowing that transports, that elevates, that saves. Okay, so much for the root word, Gnosticism, derived from that word. And if we want an inclusive uh, definition, then Gnosticism would be that spiritual perspective Uh, which centers in the claim that knowledge saves. Maybe I could uh, do better leaving out the claim. Gnosticism is that spiritual perspective that centers in saving knowledge. Okay. Now, as such, it's wonderful, isn't it? My spirit lights up. So why all these bad marks, these uh, slings and arrows, this bad press that it has gotten down the ages? Well, uh, I think there's a good reason and a bad reason. Let's uh, let's start uh, with the bad reason. Uh, the bad reason is uh, it comes back to human fallibility and uh, it has to do with power politics. It has to do with prejudice. Um, all of which, which uh, distills to two points. One is power politics and we'll get into that when we're talking about Uh, Christian Gnosticism and Elaine Pagel's uh, theory about uh, that it was actively suppressed and let's just jump ahead to the key point there it was actively suppressed for the reason the emphasis that I read in the prayer circle uh, out there namely uh, the kingdom of heaven is within you now we have that in, our, in the, the, the regular New Testament, but that's not really what the Greek says in that. It is the kingdom of heaven is in your midst, which is something a little bit different. But to say it's within you, that makes you, in a way, the ultimate source of appeal. But that's anti hierarchical, institutional, and, uh, and the lid's off, you know. The Holy Spirit can uh, effervesce anywhere and uh, that plays havoc with institution. So, Elaine Pago said, that's, uh, it was forcibly, and it was denounced as heresy and so on. That's why. But... Um, so the power politics aspect was one reason why it got the bad name, but there is a more, uh, more profound reason, and that really doesn't throw stones at anybody, bishops or uh, whoever. It is simply uh, the incapacity to understand what was being said, and I think that is uh, the real reason uh, or the deeper reason. These two things playing together uh, were the chief reasons why 
uh, the bad reasons. They're unfortunate. One wishes that they were not there. But we're still on the point of why did it get a bad press? And there was one very good reason, I think, in in the sense that it deserved it. <laughs> and that good reason is that in uh, there is a tendency within Gnosticism uh, to a sharp dualism between good and evil. Some things are good, other things are bad, but just really a pronounced dualism with, now here's where the really bad part came, with um, a severe uh, derogation of the world. We have to get a better word than derogation. Put down, put down of matter and the physical existence. Uh, This is a veil of sin and tears, uh, a negative view on this world, meaning including in that uh, our life in this world. Now, whereas our hearts all rose with when we're talking about saving knowledge, uh, I suspect that our hearts all deflate when we talk about this negative view of life in this world. I mean, oh, hi, it's beautiful. <laughs> the sun is shines after the winds slam in. And, uh, so are we together on that point too? I suppose I want to say something there. That is a criticism that appears certainly to be valid on the surface. It's the one that's always touted. And certainly there are Gnostic documents that point very wholeheartedly in that direction. But in many other of the Gnostic documents, it appears to me that what they're talking about is not the wickedness of this material world, but the lack of a person's ability to see it as both. In other words, when you were introducing yourself and saying who you were, your work, God, and family, it occurred to me that From a Gnostic point of view, that possibly there would be no difference, there'd be no conflict, no blame. Mm -hmm. And so, I wouldn't want to belabor the point, because there's certainly a lot of evidence to justify what you said. Right. But there are other documents that seem to point to a different view. In other words, the world, just as a mechanical clockwork, is perhaps what they were talking about, without seeing the, the... Great death that it also contains. Yes. Well, I think you're right, Myron, to uh, to alert us to the danger that this bad press has been undiscriminating in this area. And it is true that when uh, when I read this as a Gnostic, a Gnostic document, I don't sense anything of that note within it. Uh, but Okay. Nevertheless, I uh, stay with the generalization that if one took um, Gnosticism or Gnostic literature, I started to say as a whole, it has a world negating character to it. That's what I'm tempted to say, but when I say Gnostic literature as a whole, I've just sounded here and there in it. And uh, so let's just leave it that that there's certainly, uh, that, that comes out very strongly in certain very important Gnostic texts, but let's remember that uh, it was not universal, and uh, so let's not tar the whole thing. <laughs>